Hi, welcome. My name is Dale McCoskey, and I'd like to take a couple minutes to discuss um, the using uh, various tools, motivating agents, um, such as I can show you on here. Um, you know what I use here for um, bringing out drive the drive of the dog um, through for protection work. Which, if you go and watch my videos, you'll see me doing a little bit of protection work. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, I mean, they go on about this thing about using treats as a motivating agent and clickers. Um, there's various reasons I stay away from using those. Uh, if you go in, I talk about, you know, why uh, I avoid them because we understand it's about connection and, um, you know, how a dog's decision making process, how it's governed through uh, through the roles themselves because it's relational, it's, it's part of perception how dog perceives you through those roles um, you know what you the choices you make with what you use um, can be a problem it really can um, beyond just you know dog wanting things you have to look at the relational side of, of this and, or and understand it. a lot a lot of trainers a lot of dog owners don't don't understand it um, they just caught up with feelings and emotions and at that level and that's why there's so many problems with dogs even in training and so when you're building a dog up, when you're, when you're seeking to unleash the drive of the service dog, because uh, right now I'm training a, a dog in protection, and trust me, it's a lot of, I mean, to do it right, it requires a lot of effort. Well, there's a lot of skill, and um, it's knowing how all these dots connect together through the relational side, so that, you know, when a dog is expressing that state of mind, it still is coming through a follower that follower role. It's a conditional state. So that's the thing to understand. So when you're when you're bringing all the pieces together, say when you're using a motivating agent such as a Kong, which is a great, by the way, it's a great item to use rather than just say a ball. Um, you know, I really encourage you to pick up, you know, um, one of these for if you're doing, you know, getting the, you know, the drive of the dog out, um, because what it does is it takes when you throw it, it doesn't just go one direction it'll it'll bounce around and it'll change directions and that's great because it really does it helps to bring that drive out out of the dog so a Kong the Kong is a great or something similar to the Kong it doesn't have to be the name brand one but because uh, I'm not in here promoting one item um, but something that will bounce around um, it really helps to bring the drive of the dog out and again on my videos you'll see me using this uh, but again you have to build up the dog um, to a bark to speak on command and then you'll, um, you know, you'll bring this, attach, connect the dot with this. And also the other tool I use, you see in my videos, is uh, when I'm using the game of tug. This is just a uh, tug toy. It's a rope. It's uh, designed so that you can, you know, play the game of tug with the dog. But again, this is relational, so it's like the same thing. You're using what I'll turn it's called prey drive, the instinctual drive of the dog to want to, to fetch and chase. But I understand that, that that drive, and that's the thing about when a lot of trainers, especially a lot of people that really don't understand learning theory and about how a dog's mind is motivated and, and, and influenced through, through connection, they'll take prey drive and they don't really understand it. I mean, it, it still it still comes through it still comes through the roles. I mean, it's it's relational. The dog's mind, how it's governed, it's through pack pack influence. So. You know, um, so what item you use to 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 you know to trigger that drive, that prey drive, you know what you're doing is that you're still taking it directly through the relational aspect of that. So whether you're perceived, and the problem here can be is is if you're not if you don't understand it, and you're using certain types of agents to motivate the mind, the dog could still be objectifying you at a at a, at a high level. And um, that's why, you know, you'll see if you're using something like a Kong and it's not, you know, the dog, the perceptions aren't changed, the dog isn't perceiving um, you as the leader, so to speak, you're holding this, the dog will bite in the hands um, or um, the dog will show um, too much, uh, put too much influence over something like the tug toy. And then, you know, because basically the dog isn't connecting that way, they're saying basically they're putting too much possession and ownership on those items and um, therefore they perceive those as them owning them at too high of a level. That's why, you know, when you see a dog not, say, outing on command, um, they're at too high, high of a possessive state. Now, part of the training, and you'll see me doing the training, um, I'm actually 
um, I actually know how these dots connect in a certain way so that I'm, I'm you know I'm releasing that the, the drive fully it's like what I'm doing actually is I'm I'm allowing myself to be objectified um, at first um, purposely I mean, a lot of trainers don't understand how that comes together so they'll they'll not know how to kind of you know allow the uh, gas pedal to be pushed fully down and then start to ease up a little bit at the at the end but when you, when you understand what I'm doing you know everything connects a certain way so that I make sure that you know I'm getting the full intensity of, of that drive out I'm making sure that you know the uh, the uh, speed is there and but the focus is gonna is gonna come online as well so um, so I just encourage you to check out one of my books I have um, for for the service dog um, trainer whether it's search and rescue police law enforcement whatever you're doing really encourage you to check out my book it's called going the ground the methodology of police dog training I show this process you see my step by step you'll see me you see it all laid out point by point you're going to see information in that book that you're not going to find um, anywhere else I talk about why you don't use treats uh, it's a bad idea even for tracking don't use them and for, for narcotic detection training don't use them all these science based people that are really trying to promote um, you know science as you know the, this idea about learning is scientific and the way to go because they're appealing to the again what they're doing is they're trying to take doms appeal to the emotions of, of people to try to make you feel good about training it's re I show it's ridiculous because it's your what you're doing is these people are just they're taking a one-dimensional view I actually go deeper and show treats aren't a good idea because it, it what you'll do what can do the danger of it is it'll create a, a secondary association of, of this of the scent picture even through tracking um, e how dogs mind connects that is in their psyche even through with also with narcotic de uh, detection and so the, the question is well what do you use you want to use something that is going to go uh, it's not going to be directly associated that way through the scent picture okay and 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 again I know you would say well I don't really quite understand what you're saying Dale kind of confusing at this level go in and read my book I explain it down point by point you have to kind of trust what I'm saying but there really there's a there's a risk factor there a dog could could uh, could trigger a false alert and it can pull the dog's mind off the track or off the uh, during narcotic uh, detection this is kind of new information it really is I, I take it down and show um, you know why it can be a problem especially if you're not uh, if you're being objectified and, and that's when you're gonna have a problem I, I explain exactly how those pieces connect and when a dog's mind can really kind of get the tra trail off or, or be triggered I show the relational side of that as well um, the, how the risk factor can go way up so again this is uh, information that's really critical that you that you understand this and but beyond that it's really going to um, if you're no matter where you're at in training you can take my information and you can kind of blend it and merge it in without starting all over again. It can really, uh, you know, un unleash the full potential of your, of your service dog. So, um, again, I just encourage you to check out my book. Um, it's available through Amazon Kindle uh, as a as an ebook, um, and again, has great information. So, thanks very much for watching. I hope you have a great day.